If you have already seen other One Marvelous Scene videos, I won't bother reintroducing this to you. If you haven't, look at the Ultron After Party video for the full details. One thing I do disagree with is that you can use just one scene to represent everything you think is great about the MCU. So I plan to do a few of them. One, as I mentioned before, is about the other unsung hero of Avengers Endgame. Yet that video also talks about Tony Stark heavily, and I think it's important first to talk about one scene in his origin. In the commentary for Iron Man 2, Jon Favreau said that the reason the first movie started in media res was because the audience had trouble really identifying with Tony. Basically, he didn't seem likable if the scenes were shown in chronological order. We see him gambling, sleeping with reporters, getting his Air Force friend drunk, and he has a stripper pole on his plane like he's freaking Austin Powers. I can definitely see audiences looking at these scenes and going, this is supposed to be our hero? Are you kidding me? Thus it was important to show this scene first. The audience would see that even though he is egocentric, he is still a nice guy. So when the audience sees his behavior beforehand, we understand that he is going to be in for a very rude awakening. What I want to focus on is the scene where he introduces the Jericho missile. Actually, it's this one shot where he shows off the weapon behind him. I think this is the quintessential shot of Tony Stark before he becomes a hero. In a similar way, I think this shot shows that Steve Rogers always was Captain America. He just didn't have the physical strength to be it yet. Similarly, I think that this shows what Tony Stark could be like before he was a hero. Or was he always a hero? As other people did, I assumed that there was an old Tony Stark. That Tony Stark symbolically died when the shrapnel embedded itself in his chest. Then a new Tony Stark was reborn with Yinsen's last words. I don't think that's the case anymore. This is because in Iron Man 2 he seems to revert to his jackass behavior. Now the reason for this is of course that he thinks he's going to die regardless of whether he uses the arc reactor. He seems to think that there isn't much of a point anymore, so why the hell not? But was he like that beforehand? What could cause it? Okay, yes, it's a bit cliche to say his parents didn't love him, poor little rich boy. But regardless, that kind of upbringing can leave a hole in someone's heart. I will give this to his parents, though. They didn't raise him to think that if you're less fortunate, you must be inferior in some way, especially if you're a different skin color. They didn't raise him to think that laws that say you should treat your employees well and that you should clean up your waste are akin to communism. And even though he's a womanizer, he doesn't seem to think he's entitled to it and that he can force himself on any woman he wants. Taking all that and other things into consideration, I wonder if the way Tony Stark acts is a bit of a facade. Basically, he might have felt too vulnerable showing the world his real self. This is his real self. Like his father, he's a tinkerer, someone who sees the world as a bunch of problems to solve. This aspect of himself would clearly carry on throughout the rest of the series. It's just at this point, he seems to be doing it without purpose, without guidance. Insert Tired the Matrix reference here. So Yinsen's last words gave him purpose. It gave him something to do with his abilities instead of just building weapons. It is important to note that Tony did work hard in justifying this aspect of his business. I think that he told himself that of course his weapons were only being used on the bad guys. Part of the rude awakening was that they weren't. And we saw how furious he got when he found out his weapons were being used on innocent people. I think it's safe to say that no matter how he escaped from the cave, he still would have declared that his company was getting out of that business. In short, I think this shows Tony Stark being a potential hero just like the Steve Rogers shot. He is someone who will save the day in a big, bombastic manner, because he is a larger-than-life person. Including being too big for a pesky secret identity. Looking at the movie as a whole, we can see that this shot shows that deep down, Tony Stark always was Iron Man. Next, we'll be looking at how all these things will carry Tony Stark to the endgame. Until my next quest, everyone.